Okay, I'm Don Mull, the mayor of the city of Alcoa. I've been on the commission since 1971 and became mayor in 1983, and I've been mayor since. I guess I'm one of the few people can say I was actually born in Alcoa on Lodge Street, and I'm uh, proud of that fact. And uh, But I moved away when I was four years of age, and I came back when I married in 1959. Are you the longest acting mayor for Alcoa? I think David Dugan said I was. Uh, I would be the act longest acting mayor. I was first elected vice mayor in 71 until 83. Then I took Andy Knox's place. Did you already tell us how old you were when you become mayor? How old? Yeah. We're well, let's see, 71, I was born in 35. What's that, about 30 something years old? Uh, so you've done it. A long time of your life. Yes. We're going to talk, I want you to talk about things that happened in the past 25 years. Um, can you think of a very exciting event that's happened in the past 25 years? Well, I, I, I think our financials are probably the most exciting thing. Uh, our population, when I first got on the commission back in 71, we were around 5,000. 51 or 200, and now we're 9,000 uh, citizens. And uh, virtually our property tax was the tax. Aluminum Company was much larger, and we had very, very meager sales tax. I mean, it wasn't enough to really talk about. And uh, we have grown in our business, and then our sales tax has grown. And now our sales tax is greater than our property taxes. So I think that's a, an accomplishment yeah. in itself. Of course, it's a necessary thing. And the expansion of that, you know, Alcoa Highway, two-lane highway, back whenever. It's four-lane, now we're gonna add more lanes to it. And uh, the West Plant development, that's the exciting thing we've been working on for a number of years. But, uh, you know, we started out uh, at our old city hall down there, then we moved over into the electric department for our meetings. And now we're located uh, at our new city hall. We call it our new city hall. We had a. We were very fortunate to get that building. Uh, it was in a foreclosure type situation, and are fixing to be. And we purchased it uh, that and all the furnishings for a real savings to the city. Plus, you know, our police and fire have grown. You know, our our fire, our police department now is as big as you know city of Maryville, which is twenty. 25,000 plus. And I think that we are, uh, you know, we got a full time, our, our police department, fire department, public works, we operate our own water treatment plant, and we're more like a city of 30,000 30, plus because of all the departments that we operate, because we're a full service city, plus we have schools as well. What which you probably answered this during this, but what have you noticed the most changes in, in some of the departments? Well, have become our, bigger. Yeah, our departments have certainly expanded. I remember when I first got on the commission, uh, when we would have, let's say, a large sewer line to be extended, we had to get an outside firm to do the engineering and the plan it, and then we. Uh, now, you know, we've got several engineers that design it and, you know, then we, we can uh, have it bid and, and have, have it done or some, a lot of times the city itself can do a lot of the work. But uh, we had no uh, reserve set up for equipment replacement. We just went and got a loan at the city. I mean, at the, I'm sorry, at the bank. We just got a loan, paid it off. And I can recall that we didn't have a backhoe and our department, Public Works, had to go borrow the electric departments back home. And there was a little, at that time, there was a little friction between the two departments. You know, this is our equipment, you need to get your own equipment. Certainly it's not like that now. We're all working for one thing in the betterment of the city, and it's a lot better. Um, I know this year was a big, or last year, for the Alcoa High School, the new high school. Um, is that the first new school you've seen built, or did you see? It really was. Uh, we have, the elementary school has been totally remodeled a few years ago, 
and then we've added on the middle school at the old high school level, and it's outgrown itself. And we built a new high school uh, itself, and uh, expansion of the football field. And, and I think they said the other day that there's 2,100 kids now in Alcoa's system, which is much greater than they ever anticipated. So there need more space in the middle school there. Anything that you would do any different than what's what you have accomplished during these years? No, I really enjoyed uh, working with the commissions, and uh, we've been very fortunate in that um, we have people that get on the city commission that do not have, I call it, an axe to grind. They want to work for the betterment of the city, and uh, we all work well, and. We've been fortunate enough in the last few years to have good city managers that uh, are interested in the city. And that doesn't go, I won't say how many years ago, we did have some problems, but uh, the city manager is dedicated and, and the commission is dedicated. And it, it, I'm not to say that we don't disagree occasionally on things, but overall we're all good friends and uh, we want to see our city do better. In your opinion, what um, what do you feel was the most challenging um, event or project that you all have taken on in the past 25 years? Well, we, we went through some rough times uh, back in the late 80s. Uh, we had a developer that was trying to develop uh, where presently our city hall is, and uh, it was a real mix-up, and the city manager was involved, and it took a long time to get that straightened out. And uh, since that time, since that time, uh, we have uh, been fortunate in that we, uh, we've got good management. There were 10 mayors before you. Are you the 11th mayor? Is that how it? No, I don't know. I, I haven't gone back and... I looked it up, and I think it said there's 10 mayors before you. That would sound right. Yeah. That would sound right. So you're the 11th mayor of Alcoa. Um, anything you would change about yourself as mayor? You know, I have never heard anything, anything negative about you. Everything's been positive. Anything that. that you would want to change? To... Well, I, I do appreciate that. Uh, <clears throat> I would say for this commission as well as myself that uh, we all have one purpose, and that's to make our city even better than it is today. And um, I do keep a, a close eye on our financials and see how they run and that our bond indebtedness doesn't exceed what we can afford and the interest rates that we're paying for our, our bonds and uh, and being able to do all the things that we have been able to do. We built fire halls, built a high school, bought a city hall. A new safety building. <laughs> a new safety building. So uh, And a new municipal building. New municipal building. Uh, we remodeled a fire department over on uh, Jewel Street and we've got one down at uh, in the Louisville area, oh. and so, you know, when you look at it from that aspect, and the, the fact that our finances are set up so that we uh, put reserves aside, so we can buy police cruisers, so we can buy fire trucks. In fact, we're buying a fire truck now, I forget, I don't want to say how much it is, but it's a, it's a lot of money. And uh, But you've got to keep up your equipment. You have to keep your equipment, uh, I'd say, first rate or first thing you know our our fire rating fire insurance is less now because of our fire department we've got a very high rated fire department in that can, and they come in and check you each year and see if you can respond to fires check all your fire plugs see if they're all working so it, it's a process you go through to keep your city up to date and I think our streets uh, we, you know you hear a few complaints about, I wish my street was paved and all that, but I think overall, uh, our city does a great job 
with uh, all of our services. In fact, I guess in the last 10 years, I get more compliments about people that live in the city and talk about how our services are the best they've ever been or wherever they live. Can you think of something? That... Um, as far as developments, business developments and things like that, Don, what might you, what, what might you say Pellissippi, for example, what impact has that Pellissippi Parkway perhaps maybe had on us and, and may have in the future? I think, it, I think the Pellissippi Parkway is probably one of the greatest things, biggest things we've had uh, since I've been there because I remember when it was talked about, I went to Nashville several times, we lobbied for it through several governors and you know, till you get the thing started. But you know, I'm amazed each time uh, I go out Alco Highway and look down Pellissippi and see the hundreds and hundreds of cars coming from West Knoxville and think to myself, what would we do without Pellissippi Parkway? Mm -hmm. And certainly we'd like to see it pushed on across over to 321 and, and, and have more circulation around uh, not only Alcoa, Maryville, Blount County. You know, the, the biggest thing, uh, infrastructure is so important, water, sewer, electric, lights, roads. But if you do not have uh, the road system, it, it chokes you. It just chokes you off. If you go down the interstate, you see these little towns along the interstate, they have nothing really to offer. There's no businesses that want to come in. And without sales tax and business tax and so forth, your, your community doesn't expand. Now, a lot of people don't want to see expansion. But without it, you start going the wrong way. You know, you start, like the northern cities, you know, they're drying up. But we're fortunate in that we've got a great uh, road system. Alco Highway, Pellissippi Parkway, we've got an airport, and like I say, our police and fire and all of our departments are second to none. So I'm very proud of uh, where we're at today. And I guess we need to say something about the West Plant development. Yes. Yeah. Sure. As far as Springbrook Farm goes, uh, maybe talk a little bit about that, how, how we finally managed to get to the point we're at now, because I know that took a long time several years, and then uh, I guess the vision, maybe the vision you personally have for it. Well, and I do remember the West Plant because I worked in the West Plant when I was a senior out of high school. Woo. So I actually worked at that facility for a few months in the summer before I went to college. But we've worked on the, the planning of that, I know, for 20 years. Mm -hmm. we've, once the plant was going down, what we're going to do, what's next, and uh, trying to get the aluminum company to actually think about selling the property was very hard because, you know, it, it was paid for and we might need it in the future and that kind of thing. But once they found out they didn't need that property and found a developer that had a vision for it uh, along with the city, and uh, we've been working on it, you know, for the last several years, I guess my goal at this point is, is, is see some retail development on the site and get that property up and running and getting it back on tax roads or you know it wasn't only tax roads it was just vacant land start generating some sales tax property taxes for the city because that's your lifeblood is, is if you can keep those taxes business and, and sales tax going it helps from having to increase your property tax Mm -hmm. I thought of something else that's already left me. I know, see, that's all. Um, what was it? It was on the tip of my tongue. Oh, I know what it was. Um, of course, we know how important, at least to the residents of Alcoa, our sports are at the high school, and, sure. and we know how well they did this year, and, and, and they do every year, but they did exceptionally well in all several areas mm -hmm. this year. Um, in regards to that, uh, our greenway system. I know we have an excellent greenway system, and how do you how do you see that has? I know that's really come along in the last twenty five or so years. Can you maybe talk a little bit about yeah, the greenway system? And I'm, I'm glad you asked that because I recall many years ago when uh, Ted Bradford was publisher of the Daily Times. I mentioned to him one day, and I was 
had gotten on the commission, I said, you know, sure would be nice to have some kind of trail system from Maryville to Alcoa, versus vice versa. And he said, well, yeah, I said, we should work toward that. And we've been fortunate in that we have uh, our, our uh, citizens and our commission and our personnel have worked toward that end and gotten grants and what have you. And, uh, you know, seven miles from Maryville to Alcoa on the trail system, and we're expanding it now out toward uh, Clayton's. So, you know, you can ride your bike, take your dogs, walk your kids, jog. Uh, it's a real asset, and people, uh, I have people that stop and say, I, I live in Knoxville, but I love your Greenway system. And I walk the Greenway system every day myself. I'm, you know, I walk over to Springbrook because it's a nice, nice park, shaded, and it's really nice uh, to walk that. A lot of people walk it. Yeah. And our Parks and Recreation, they do a great job too, I have mm -hmm. to say, because they work for all three governments, you know, Maryville, Alcoa, and Bluff County. They keep it mowed, they keep, you know, litter up, and keep the restrooms working and all that kind of thing. And we just put in some new playground equipment at Springbrook this past spring, and the kids love it. So uh, it's a great place to live. Uh, I have people say, you know, I didn't realize it. There was such a place like this. I said, yeah, and I kid them. I said, yeah, but too many people are finding out about it. <laughs> In other words, I came from the north down here, and I don't want anybody else coming, you know. We, I like it like it is, but uh, we're, we're, we do a good job, I think. I'm on a planning commission, too, and I think our planning commission does a good job on uh, setting standards, setting our rules and regulations of what we want, and keeping development orderly and something that will be pleasing in years to come. If we develop a little strip center, we don't want all the buildings to be one level. We want them up and down, different facials on them, and you know, make it attractive. And we want landscaping around it, not just blacktop. So I think that's what the citizens want today is a nice place to go shop or eat or what have you. And, and certainly we have uh, an abundance of restaurants, mm -hmm. which, uh, and and hotel motels, we got those too, which is great. I think it just shows the people that come into our area on vacation or wherever they're going, uh, to the mountains, to Dollywood, wherever, uh, and just enjoy the scenery. Because I think, I guess I'm partial, but I think uh, our area is one of the prettiest areas. And I've traveled around the United States, a lot of states, I think it's one of the prettiest areas, and I hike all the time, mm -hmm. and I just really enjoy the uh, mountains, the streams, and the cleanliness of our area, air, uh, and we're very fortunate because uh, I talked to one group one day, and I said, you know, the real thing that we all don't really appreciate is we've lived here our whole lives, and we look at that mountain about every day, and we just accept it as being there but we don't really appreciate it being there. Mm -hmm. And if you get older, drive through it, Cage Cove or whatever, you just really realize how fortunate we really are to be in an area like this. And you know, I, I think the citizens in our area, Mayor Ralph Cohen, Blunt County, I, I think they're very friendly and um, I get a lot of compliments about people saying, you know, people here are very friendly. Where I came from, they weren't, it wasn't that way. And I hear that quite a bit. I mean, that's that's a fact. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I, I'm just proud to be live in the city of Alcoa. What would you say is probably, in your opinion, the number one draw for people maybe wanting to move to the city? I think they find out uh, through people they know. They come and visit. They like the they like the area as far as the beauty. But when they stop to think about the taxes are so much lower. I know uh, Ed Mitchell told me the other day that he had somebody from Michigan move down here and they bought tags for the car and they went into his office and said, there's somebody made a mistake. I just want to tell you, these tags are only $28 a car. And uh, Ed said, well, yeah, that's right. And uh, well, where I was from, one car was $900 and the other car was $700 a year for tags. So you got that. 
our property taxes are probably one of the lowest. It's not the lowest in our area, but it's it's low. As far as Maryville Alcoa in Blunt County, we are the lowest on our property taxes. But you know, uh, when you when you put all these things together, you don't realize what a great area it is because. I know I hear people from California, you know, but they, they pay about 60% of their salaries on taxes. They got taxes on everything. Mm -hmm. so. I can tell you what I hear a lot, a, a draw that brings people in is that school. Yes. They school love is. our core school. They've heard mm -hmm. great things about our core school system and that is a big draw. Well, and right now, it, it's, a, it's a seller's market. Mm -hmm. I mean, a property comes available and now corn people want to grab it and live there because they, kids can go to school without paying tuition and closeness and all that. And, and the ranking of the school system in the state is high. And um, I think that's an asset that really draws people to our area. And that's a, one of the reasons that our population has grown. And, um, you know, Denso is going to be adding 1,400 jobs, I think. And you've got to have places for those people to live. So we're seeing a lot of expansion multifamily and, and a lot of demand now on the West Plant side for housing, you know, mm -hmm. condos, uh, even a, I think a, a assisted living facility is looking at it. And there's a lot of people looking at, the, at, at that site right now uh, for that. And the convenience factor. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of times we don't think about, you can hop on Alcohol Highway and go to Knoxville, West Knoxville, uh, go down, hit the interstate system, go to Nashville, Chattanooga, and we, the convenience we've got and the shopping districts we've got access to makes it a great place to live. Um, I, did, I just keep thinking about this. Um, the Lumen Company, uh, over the past 25 years, how have you seen, of course we've, we've seen the changes it's made, how has the Lumen Company changes affected us in the last, us being the city in the last 25 years? Well, the biggest thing the aluminum company offered when I became, got on the city commission was their property taxes. But their property taxes were the biggest payer in, in the county. And we depended on their, their, their taxes to expand or do anything we did in the city. And now that they have shrunk and they're pulling down two other facilities and got the north plant left, that has shifted. And if, with the sales taxes gotten stronger and more, plus uh, Denzo has expanded in Maryville, and it's added, in, I think they're gonna have about 3,000 jobs down there eventually. Mm -hmm. So it's gotten to be the largest employer. And uh, you know, when you think of the airport and the highway systems and, and the accessibility to all the area, I don't know if you can find another place uh, as convenient as living in our area. And here again, I think we we just take it for granted. I mean, you know, if we go out on the highway and there's 15 cars ahead of us, we think, man, this is a traffic jam. Yeah. You know, go to these big cities and see what it's like. Yeah. You're an hour getting across them. So it makes a lot of difference. It does. That's all I can think of right yeah. now. I've been asking history stuff and yeah. about, you know, when he went in and... You know, I like to say this, and I, told, I said it first, I was born in Alcoa, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I can recall uh, that I remember living there, and at the, where Alcoa Road goes across, that was just a, a whole road, and all the property north, of, I guess be north of there, was just woods. Yeah, I can and, imagine. And then they had garden spots people that were renting, they let them have garden spots, the aluminum company did, and then they let them raise hogs up there on the circle, Mari Circle, oh. and my dad had a pig pen up there. Huh. And every fall, he would shoot the pigs, put them on a wood sled and drag them down to the house on Lodge Street and string them up in the back, and, you know, dress the hogs out, put them in barrels. I mean, you know, you can't do that today, but I mean, this is a little kid. Yeah. This was, you know, this was Babcock uh, still here? When you lived here, was Babcock still yes, operating? Yes. yes so it was. it was pretty big back then, too. It was back it? then, yeah, and, and uh, it was a big industry, too. Yeah. And uh, they, you know, I didn't realize this, but they, they were actually bringing logs out of Teleco Mountain. Yeah. 
down here to the south. I didn't. They they brought them across at Cedico, the railroad Cidico, that came across yeah. Chilhowee Lake, the Tennessee yes. River, on over to here, and then they'd send some back across. And, I guess the most surprising thing to me is the aluminum company selling all their dams. Yeah. That's, I, I would have never thought that would, could have ever happened. I just thought, you know, they would keep them forever. But Because uh, that's basically, that's what, what brought them here. Yeah. What, what yeah. created the city, basically, were mm -hmm. those dams. Well, in but, today's environment, you couldn't build a dam. I mean, you got to go through all the environmental tests, and it'd take you many, many years to build a dam. So they just went up there and bought land and, you know, cut it and yeah. dammed up the river and started generation uh, electricity. But it was, uh, you know, it was a shock to me. Of course, you know, the word, they said there was millions of tons of aluminum that's generated from foreign countries like China. And they can make aluminum cheaper than mm -hmm. they can because of the labor force over there. Which is, and they have no environmental standards in those countries. Mm. You know, they can pollute and all that. Yeah. So it's it's just different uh, now than back then. But I don't know. It's a you know, it's it's, it's actually harder uh, for industry with all the all the stipulations put on them uh, and requirements they have to meet to, to actually work. Um, you know, we're seeing retail now, you know, being mail order, oh, know, yeah. Google and all that to order your mm -hmm. stuff. But, you know, I can see a trend now, really. People still like to go in and shop oh, and yeah. pull things up and look at it. Touch. I and touch it, feel it, and go try it on. Smell it. You yeah. order that stuff and it don't fit and you got to send it back yeah. and all that stuff. So, um, I think this trend will come back because uh, I think that people really want to, you know, when I go grocery store, I want to look at the milk and see how fresh it yeah. is and, my, and the food items that I pick up. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's just, maybe it's me, maybe it's my age that uh, dictates that. It's a lot of these younger, uh, the millennials, uh, the, you know, I, I, it's fast. As long as they've got my groceries for me, I'll go buy and pick it up. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, uh, but it's a different generation trend, I think, it is. that we're seeing happen. It is. And, uh, you know, when I was growing up, we made our own Everything. Fun, fun times. <laughs> we built our little scooters ourselves. We climbed trees. We're outside. Wasn't any computers. Wasn't any TV. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, TV came to Blunt County, I think, 53. There wasn't any TV up to that point. And um, it's just now kids, you know, are indoors and on a computer and, and they're not as sociable. I think the old times were good. The music we could understand. Now you can't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's one of the things I'm saying. I know it is, and it's we're a different. We're just a different generation. We are. I mean, but, jobs mean different to us. You know, we want to do our job the best we can. You know, where you go to some places, and you know they don't even thank you. They don't even. They don't care. They don't care. Well, you know, when I was growing up, there wasn't any jobs for young kids, and I got a paper out. I remember the Daily yes, Times. Yes, that's did, what ever, yeah. The Daily Times did. My brother did that. Out around the Mitchell Hollow area. Mm -hmm. I lived out there in Bill Heights, and um, they didn't deliver papers, so I got paper out, and that's how I made money. But, you know, little girls uh, worked at a few of the uh, drive ins. I worked at Joe's Drive In, 50 cents an hour. Yeah, and, but, <laughs> but the girls got the jobs. You didn't see no guys out there hopping her. <laughs> and so there wasn't any jobs, but it seemed like there was more dedication uh, with our generation because when they got a job, they stayed with it. They wanted to do well, they wanted to work. Uh, you know, my parents really couldn't afford to send me to college and, and I had to work each summer to earn my tuition, uh, which I'm glad, mm -hmm. but you know, I went to Maryville College, but I, I couldn't afford Maryville College now, but it was much cheaper then, but I'd work in the summer, save my money, so I'd go to school. Oh. And, uh, but you know, now kids have got Scholarships, if they want to go to college, there's all kind of opportunities for them to get money mm -hmm. to go to school if they <coughs> make their grades. Uh, but that wasn't an opportunity that we had when I was growing up. City of Alcoa, how many employees does it have? We got over 260 something, something 
employees. Hovers right around 260, 265. Yes. yes. And uh, we were fortunate during the downturn in 08 and 09 that we didn't have to lay anyone mm -hmm. off. And through attrition, we just were able to get through those couple of years. It was pretty rough. Uh, we got through those years without uh, having to cut our workforce. But, I, you know, all of our facilities in the city, to me, are top-notch. You know, been built in the last several years. And uh, something to be proud of. Yeah. Else right now. Well, we done good. We've got a lot. Yeah. I'll just try to cut out. <laughs>